What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to run Docker for your Java development environment with IntelliJ. So lots of developer surveys have been done and it looks like 60-80% of Java developers prefer IntelliJ as their IDE, right? So after that it's Eclipse and after that it's, you know, whatever, <laughs> basically is what the survey said. Now. I already have come up with some different containers for your Java development environment with Docker. I started all the way back in 2017 with NetBeans. We know what happened to NetBeans pretty much, right? It's still alive, but then I went to Eclipse, but I still have had a lot of, um, I guess, comments, complaints, emails on, you know, why am I not doing this or why am I not doing my demos with IntelliJ? Well. I'm happy to say that today is the day that we're going to IntelliJ. Not because I just discovered IntelliJ, but because, you know, after having reading these, you know, market surveys, uh, I agree that it's time to swap over to IntelliJ to please the masses. So that's what I've created right now. And these images, these Docker images are all available to you on Docker Hub and are also the code, right? The Docker files and the script are available on MVP Java's GitHub account. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna showcase how easy it is to get this up and running and give you a high level overview of how this stuff is actually working in order to facilitate you being able to set up your development environment in a Docker container. So you see our little run.sh script. We're gonna actually go in here. We're gonna git clone this. So you're just gonna go in your home directory, right? And you're gonna say git clone and then we're going to get that repository here. Now, this works for Linux hosts, right? So I'm running a Linux host. I'm actually running a virtual machine right now uh, with Ubuntu. Now, you don't have to be running a virtual machine, but in this case I do, just to better segment all my tutorials and everything like that. Could be on a, a bare metal machine that you're doing this. However, it's gotta be a Linux host, right? So I haven't set this up for Windows or Mac or anything like that, okay? Now, usually containers are not meant or not, you know, run with graphical user interfaces. And this is an exception to that. So I've done a little bit of X Windows uh, magic here in order to allow the X, uh, the application, right, which is IntelliJ to contact or have permission to contact the X11 server on the host through the run.sh script. So right now, if we do an LS, you'll see that it's created, you know, that GitHub directory. And if I want to run this shell script over here, I'm going to have to change permissions because the execution bit is actually not set when you do git clone. And I'm just going to say run.sh. Now, one of the first things that's going to happen is it's going to download those Docker images which contain all the configuration and the file system layers needed to bootstrap the uh, IntelliJ IDE. I already have this on my system, right? So I don't need to you know, have you wait as I download this. So what's gonna happen is that this is gonna pop up eventually, probably after a couple of minutes for you, because this is a developer environment. Those images are bigger than you know you would normally see on normal Docker images. I mean, I've, I have uh, Ubuntu in there, I have JDK 11, I have Maven, Git, I have a whole bunch of developer tools in there. So it's obviously bigger than your normal um, Docker container. Data sharing, you can say don't send. Unfortunately, data sharing is gonna show up every time you're gonna launch the container. Why? Because it's the community edition. I wanted to pick an edition that would be run and accepted by everybody and free for everybody to use for licensing issues. So in this case, community edition. Now over here, you can customize, right? I can say, now you can do this anyways, but I wanna showcase how the state of the container is gonna be maintained upon reruns. So you're not gonna lose your developer preferences, your themes, your plugins, your projects, when you shut down the container, it's gonna be persistent, okay? And I have this happen through what's called volume bind mounts. That's just a fancy word for saying there are directories on your host machine, and I take those directories that I've created for you, I'll show you where those are in a second, and I map them, I bind them to directories in the container. So as IntelliJ is 
you know, creating files and preference files and setting files and all this kind of stuff, it's going to get mapped back to your host machine. So when you shut down the container, that state is going to be there for the next invocation of the container. So it will remember the state. Okay. Now the directories I create are just IntelliJ specific directories. All right. Now plugins, we're just going to go in here and uh, we're just going to install a random plugin over here. And uh, then in projects, I don't want to shut down now. Uh, I'm going to create a new project just to showcase the fact that, you know, this is going to be uh, remembered. The state is going to persist outside the life cycle of the container. We're going to check off quick start over here and we're just going to say IJ demo. Now I've also installed Maven in the container. So you can use the bundled version or you can go in here and selectively pick the one that I installed over here. Okay. So you could run this on the command line even. Now, the first thing that's going to happen, because this is the first run, it's going to do some indexing on the JDK 11. It's going to download um, also the Maven dependencies the first time that are particular to this project. Now, I've mapped the, N, the .n2 uh, Maven repository on your host machine to inside the .n2 directory inside the uh, container. So you don't have to download the whole internet every time, okay? Downloading the internet once is enough, right? Tips, I don't wanna see this, so next time I don't wanna be bothered with this as well. This will be remembered in the state. And just to run this very simple hello world uh, project, just to show you that you know it does work, right? We're gonna come in here, just run this, and in the console output, we will see hello world uh, pop up. So it's gonna build this the first time. Hello world pops up, we're good, all right. So, and again, you can go here in the terminal and you can see here that the files are actually owned by the user who ran the run.sh script, which is me, Andy, right? My name is actually not MVP Java, it's Andy. Uh, I, la I laugh because sometimes I get emails, people say, hi, MVP Java. I get it, you, know, you can call me Andy though. So basically here, what's happening is when you run a Docker container by default, it runs as root. Okay, and unfortunately, when you close the container, you'll see that this source code, which I said again is shared on the host machine, you won't be able to access it, even if you're the one who created it, because those files will be owned by root, because root created them in the container, and that's a real problem, right? So I've actually fixed this problem by uh, adding code in the run.sh script, let me close this down and exit, so that when you actually go to your home directory now, so let me show you where this is created, there's a home directory called IDEA IC 2020.3. This was created for you by the run.sh script. And if you go in here, and you'll notice a whole bunch of directories that get created that are IntelliJ specific. That's where all the state is maintained. And that's why when we're gonna rerun the container, everything will be remembered. The plugins, the settings, the theme, all that kind of stuff, right? Now I've created a different directory in here called IDA projects. Now, if you go in here, you'll notice there's our demo, right? And if I go in there and I list the files, you'll notice they're all owned by me, Andy. Now this makes sense, right? But if I hadn't mapped the user that the system is running right now, which is Andy, into the container, this would have been owned by root and you wouldn't be able to access your own files. Huge pain, right? So this run.sh script is very um, practical. Let me just go back to uh, CD here and go back to IntelliJ just to show you the run.sh script. What will happen is it'll use what's called a build time argument user. So user being an environment variable in your host, in this case, Andy. For you, it might be Tom, it might be uh, Susanna, whatever, it doesn't matter. That user will be created inside the Docker container and you'll benefit from that by having access to the files in the container and out the container, right? So it creates all these directories and then it will map which we see with the minus V here, it'll bind mount all these directories from the host to the container. So the state is maintained. 
and it'll create this user. Now the creation of the user happens in actually the Docker file, right? So in that case here, we would have to look at the Docker file here and you can see it's creating all these directories, making sure that you're going to have access to them. But in terms of creating the user and everything like that, you can see that this happens over here, right? So not only do I install sudo so you can play inside the container and do some root specific things when you need to, but it also creates the right files in the container file system to honor that user. Okay, so you can have a look at that and you can customize that as you wish. I've allowed for a lot of customization there. Now you can rerun this run.sh script right now, but what I've done is I've created an alias called IJ for IntelliJ. It points to the path to the run.sh script. All right, so if I say IJ now, instead of run.sh, it just seems more natural, right? you will see that now, again, we get that annoying data sharing uh, that comes up just because it's a community edition, but we don't have to go through the privacy policy again. You can see here that the um, random plugin that I uh, installed is there. We've got our light theme there. We've got our application there. We don't have to you know, download any uh, Maven dependencies. Everything is already mapped. We're sharing the repository. So everything is working as it should be and maintained. So this is a great way now for you to use this image from you know one Docker installation that you have on some Linux machine to another and you don't have to reinstall IntelliJ all the time. Okay, All you have to have is those Docker images which are centrally accessible through my Docker Hub account. That's the whole point of Docker Hub, right? Central service. You just download those images and they'll work in those other, in this case, Linux environments, whatever those Linux environments are. So that is it guys, hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you have any questions or comments about you know, how we can make this uh, container better, what's missing, I didn't wanna put the whole world in there, obviously. Uh, let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna link below as well to the GitHub repository, to the Docker Hub repository. And make sure you visit uh, mvpjava.com in order to get access to not only the blog articles that accompany these videos, but the newsletter, which gives you exclusive articles and tips that you're not gonna get on mvpjava.com. So for example, over here, I got a pro tip that I'm sure is gonna save you a lot of problems when picking up the best base image for your Docker containers, okay? But you need a password to access it, right? In this case, you're not gonna have it unless you have access to the newsletter. So that's just one example, right? So there's a lot of value in signing up for this newsletter to get really exclusive content, all right? But you know, other than that, 90% of everything that comes out on mvpjava.com is freely available. Not that it, you have to pay for the newsletter, but I'm saying, you know, you can just, you don't need a password for it. So other than that, guys, let me know what your comments are below. And uh, until next time, I'll be getting the next one ready. Take care.